Welcome. Welcome everyone to the law, your money and you. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Massachusetts. Hi, and I'm Camille Barron. I'm a financial coordinator and a healthcare advisor also in Sharon, Massachusetts. And Roberta, it's very exciting today. We have a return guest, but he's literally and figuratively wearing a different uniform and he's gonna tell us all about it. Yes, we are honored and happy to have an old and new friend now, Pat McDermott, formerly the Register of Probate for how many years, Pat? 17? 18 years as Register Eight, of Probate. 18. Uh, yeah. and, and is now a newly elected Norfolk County Sheriff. Pat, tell us a little bit about yourself and let's we got so many questions and we're so excited to see you in this new role. It's really exciting. We're finishing off. Uh, I've been now, uh, I got sworn in on January 6th after, uh, like you said, after 18 years in the probate and family court. Uh, you know, I'm an attorney and I'm a dad and a husband and I live in Quincy. But, uh, but I got sworn in on January 6th and it was, a, it was a beautiful, beautiful opportunity to have my family celebrate what was the culmination of a, a two-year effort to to, as a two-year job interview with with folks like yourself and 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 many of your your your, uh, your neighbors and throughout the Norfolk County uh, jurisdiction, and uh, on January 6th it was a beautiful day. Uh, we had um, my wife was here and a few a few of our supporters. We had to keep it kind of a low-key ceremony because of COVID restrictions. But a real proud moment for me was um, having my brother pin my uh, pin me uh, with with my new badge. Uh, my brother's a Quincy police officer and uh, younger brother. And it was kind of a, a really nice uh, moment to have him there and, and him do the ceremonial pinning um, of, his, of his older brother as the new sheriff. So that was kind of a nice moment. And yeah. we really oh. hit, the, we hit the ground running. It's been eight weeks and it's been, uh, as I jokingly say to people, it's like having a fire hose in your mouth with so much that, That's funny. You, you, uh, my nephew who's been in Quincy forever, his son just got on the Quincy Police Department. When, when he Excellent. was a little boy, that was his view. Yep. That was his, his wish. And, you know, when he went to college and all that, and he went out and he went to the schools and he did everything right. And he got sworn in about a few weeks ago. Good. Right. Oh, great. It's a great department. Chief Keenan and his crew down there, they do a great job. That's fantastic. That's so. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I tell him, so your, your brother, your brother's the police officer too, huh? Yeah, well, he's, he's been a police so he got the he's, he's been on for twenty three years, I think. So he's been a he's been a police officer since he was a young guy right out of right out of college. And you know, so uh, we jokingly said, I said, uh, I said, you can't be the only one with a badge in the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that so, great? That's so exciting. So and, he's um, great. What what's happening with the probate court? I, I assume you'll be in touch because you can't just leave yeah we did a transition you know it was great uh, you know colleen briley who uh, who i i definitely uh, I, I don't if you guys don't know her already I'm, I'm sure she's more than willing to come on and and discuss what her vision of the probate and family court is but you know the courts unfortunately are still in the same position as they were and we're dealing with it here in the sheriff's office uh there's a backlog of cases uh in the probate and family court there's a backlog of cases in the criminal courts and um it really has kind of grinded a lot of access to justice to a halt. And I felt really bad at the probate court. I mean, when this pandemic hit in, in March of, well, when we, when we officially went into a lockdown in March of last year, so many people were shut out of the court system. And, and, and we, we pride ourselves as a, as a country as, as, a, as access to justice. And, and when that was stopped and halted based on the pandemic, it really put a lot of people in, in a tough situation, especially family law, family, families in crisis. So they're building themselves back out. Luckily, the trial court's been able to put together a pretty good uh, uh, video conferencing program now. Uh, unfortunately, it took a while to get up to speed. Uh, we piloted it a lot in Norfolk with, uh, with the staff there. And now Register uh, Briarly is, is, is following up on that. So uh, I, I miss it a little bit. I don't miss it a lot because I have enough on my plate over here at the sheriff's office to keep me busy. Uh, but I do keep in touch with the staff. And they're they're, uh, they're 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 moving into a new into their new direction with, under their new leadership. So tell us and tell our viewers, Pat, what is the role of a county sheriff and how does that interact with other levels of government 
you have the federal government, you have the state, you have the municipalities, and then the county. What sure. is the role of the county sheriff? So it's very interesting. So a lot of times people see the role of the sheriff. They see the, they see the movies, they see the TV shows, <laughs> yeah. um, even the news itself. You know? So the sheriffs up here in the Northeast are, are a little bit different than they are in other parts of the, co uh, the country. Uh, whereas in, in, you know, if you go down the South or the Midwest or even out West, there's a lot of sheriff's offices are the local law enforcement. They are the law and order uh, in a local uh, municipality or county. Mm -hmm. uh, up here in the Northeast, the role of the sheriff's a little bit different, although statutorily we have a lot of law enforcement power. Um, mm -hmm. that, is huge, that is mostly relegated to the local municipal police departments. Um, our role as sheriffs here are predominantly the care and custody um, of inmates, you know, after folks have been sentenced in the district court uh, or in the superior court. Uh, but usually any crimes that are committed with a penalty phase is to serve up to two and a half years those individuals get sent to the county facilities for their sentencing and their, and their incarceration. So that's the predominant role, at least today. Now, um, you know, we do a whole host of other things like civil process. So we work yeah, I was gonna say, don't you, so. What's so the the, difference? What's the difference between a deputy sheriff serving a complaint or a process or a summons and a uh, constable? Well, both, both are authorized by statute uh, to, to serve process. And um, I would say they're fairly similar other than in title, uh, but by, by law, uh, you know, technically service of process needs to be usually done by a disinterested third party. So technically anybody can serve process. However, a constable or a deputy sheriff's signature uh, is prima facie evidence in, in court. So you don't have to, if I were to serve somebody a piece of paper, that can't be subject to uh, examination in a court proceeding. My signature oh. and my stamp as a deputy sheriff or a constable is evidence in court unto itself. Whereas a disinterested third party, if there's a dispute relative to service, that individual would have to appear in court under oath to testify as to the authenticity of the actual service. So that's that's the rule that constable the constable served you know, the, almost a comp, very comparable role, but the difference, the predominantly difference in Massachusetts and elsewhere is obviously we're public employees. So sheriff's offices work for, we are mandated by law if you come and ask us to do the service on your behalf. And there's a fee involved for everybody, um, but constables are private citizens, they're private business oh. entities. They actually can refuse people. They can say, I don't do that, I don't do that work in that particular uh, town or I'm not appointed. And that's the other difference is it, as a deputy sheriff, you're appointed to serve uh, in Norfolk County, all of the towns, whereas a constable is, sir, is, is, is appointed only locally uh, by the oh, local right. administration, either the board of selectmen or the, the town manager or, or the mayor. What about arresting people? The deputy sheriff can arrest people like a there policeman? Are, there are arresting powers. We do have the authority to do that. We don't exercise that authority only because we do defer that power specifically to the municipalities or to the state police. So um, in the South, for instance, when you mentioned the difference in the role of the sheriff, are you saying that they don't have local police departments? In terms of the sheriffs, uh, us. I mean, in the, the uh, in the southern states, you said that the sheriff assumes a, the municipality's yeah, role. Is, like, is I, know, I know when I role? when I go when I've gone down to Florida, for instance, down in Miami Dade County, uh, you know that 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 the county sheriff is kind of the authority, the law enforcement authority. However, there are local police departments there that kind of serve within his jurisdiction or her jurisdiction. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little, it's reversed almost, is that down in those departments, the sheriff is the head law enforcement uh, agent, whereas the local municipalities kind of serve under the sheriff where, and up here, it's a different ballgame. We're independent, we kind of have our own uh, statutory authority, but we, we certainly defer the, the actual law enforcement component that, that is reserved for the local departments. And we just work, one of the things I do as a sheriff too, is I go out, to all of our local municipalities, and I swear most of the police officers in as oh, deputy really? sheriff. So I've been I've been going out to the various towns and and swearing in local police officers as deputy sheriffs. That gives them cross jurisdictional authority. So if, you know if a if a Sharon police officer needs to cross over into Stoughton and 
and, and, and needs to do business in, in another in a comparable municipality, they can work under the auspices of being a deputy sheriff. So they have the, the, the jurisdictional authority to exercise uh, their law enforcement role, so. Now in the, in the, um, the role that you, your primary role, when you said it's um, for uh, people, who, people who are serving sentences uh, in the county jail, um, tell us a little bit more about what actually that looks like day to day. What are some, some of the actions and responsibilities that that entails? So it's, it's, it's really, uh, it, it, it's a very structured um, facility, you know, so the day-to-day -day role, I mean, the, the, you know, inmates are, are typically, uh, they're, they're assigned to various housing units. So depending on their, we call it classification. So there's certain inmates that are, that are in special protective custody, other inmates are waiting pre-trial. So they're not technically sentenced inmates yet. So they're not in our, in our, in our official capacity of serving time. So depending on where they're, they're which which housing unit they're in, um, there's four separate wings of the of the facility here, and then there's an additional wing outside of the the lockup area called the alternative center, which is next door. Um, but on a day to day basis, it's very structured. It's you know, wake up at a certain time in the morning, breakfast is served at a certain time. You know, then there's rec time that's allowed. That every all inmates are we're, we're required by law to provide uh, recreational time, which, you know, it's not like going out and playing football. There is a little rec yard that some inmates will play soccer or play basketball. But a lot of times it's, it's what they choose to do on their free time. They can watch television, read books, magazines are provided for them. We haven't had as much robust programming, but we do have, we are restarting our programming for our inmates uh, next week. So we're bringing all of our staff back that's been off uh, on furlough or um, on, on administrative leave because of COVID, bringing all that stuff back. So those programmings take place. So it's a very structured environment that, that inmates come and go, they go into the classroom. There's, um, there's a, we have a, a, a substance abuse uh, treatment program here uh, that we have, it's very actively done. We have a medical unit. So there's oftentimes inmates need to go in and get a checkup or get oh. dentistry work done or so it's a it's a real it's like a microcosm of society here at the sheriff's office. We, we now, now your office is in Dedham, right? The main facility is in Dedham. We're right here. If you drive on Route 128, 95, you'll you'll pass in the middle of the highway oh, a yeah. facility. You'll see it on either side of the highway. It's right in the middle strip. Um, it's technically at 200 West Street in Dedham, but we're right on the border with Needham. And, but but uh, don't you have an office like right opposite the courthouse? Oh, what was that? You you, back in back in the uh, the early days, when the jail used to be located in Dedham, it, like in, the, yeah. in Dedham proper, over by the Superior Court. That uh, that facility closed in the nineties, and oh uh, boy, am I dating it, myself? It was converted into <laughs> condominium, so people are actually actually living at the jail these days. In Dedham. <laughs> oh, dear. So. Now, tell me this: what determines whether when someone is sentenced, what determines whether they go to the county jail or state prison or even federal penitentiary? Oh, good question. Yeah, so we, there's the, the different levels. It's a great question because in, in yeah. so in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you know, all, all of the crimes are, 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 are listed by statute and the penalties are also adjudicated statutory penalties. So any, any crime, and usually it's a, lower level crime, there's drunk driving cases, there's minor drug offenses, assaults and battery, crimes that aren't, that, that are lower offenses that, that serve up to two and a half years in the House of Correction. That's the jurisdiction of the sheriff. Anything above that, you know, which is the harder crimes, you know, armed robbery, murder, rape, mm -hmm. any kind of those crimes that are like, you know, you, hurt, you hear somebody serving 10 years, 20 years, life in prison, those go into the Department of Corrections, uh, which is which is managed by the Secretary of Public Safety and the Department of Corrections itself. And that's when you hear of um, MCI Walpole, Cedar oh, Junction, yeah. MCI Norfolk. Those are the two big prisons that are in our jurisdiction, but those are state facilities for higher crimes. The federal stuff, now that's an interesting dynamic as well. So when a federal prisoner gets indicted uh, locally at the district court, at the Moakley Courthouse for the most part in Boston. Uh, we actually house federal inmates here um, that are awaiting trial. So we have what's known as US Marshals uh, detainees that are here awaiting trial. 
Um, and we, so we, we house them on a day-to-day -day basis. When they're convicted, however, there are federal, there's a federal penitentiaries and they can, people, once they get convicted locally, they can be sent anywhere in the country. You know, the, oftentimes you'll hear somebody who gets convicted of a crime here in Massachusetts in the district court, they could be sentenced and served time out in Oklahoma. Um, but, uh, but, but we're just basically holding them until they, they get to trial. Did you know, Roberta, did I ever tell you that I lived, I grew up right next door to the grounds where the Rhode Island State Prison is located? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny, I was, I was reviewing um, some of the old oh, documents when they were first building the facility here huh. in the middle of the highway. And uh, some of the residents that were at the public hearings were concerned that uh, if there was a jail riot or a jail break, yeah, that, they, tra they that traffic on the highway would be backed up. <laughs> that was the. Big I remember thing. when that went up there. You know? Hey, I got a, I got a question. Sure. Uh, do you have a bigger office now? <laughs> uh, physically, I oddly the, the, the you know we took, we kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent earlier, but yeah, physically my office here is a little bit bigger than I had at the probate court. But uh, there's also two other uh, facilities that I manage. Um, we have, oh. we have our civil process office and our community corrections office out of Quincy. Um, so that's a, that's a separate office. I try to stop down there at least once a week. We have a whole team down in that facility. Um, and then we also have our, our, our what's, what was known as the Braintree Alternative Center back in the day. We call it the, just the Braintree campus of the sheriff's office. So there's a whole facility down in Braintree that has our uh, youth leadership camp as well as uh, uh, some of our administrative offices, as well as our training facility for our new, for our new, new uh, sheriff's officers. Is so, that near the Braintree Police Station? We, we did a book for the Braintree Police Officers. No, it's actually down towards Holbrook. It's, all, it's almost on the Holbrook line. Mm -hmm. If you go down Washington Street, yeah. all the way down towards Holbrook, uh, there's a, it's, it's the former uh, respiratory hospital for Norfolk County. Uh, it was all down in Braintree there. It's in, uh, the town of Braintree oh, took, took that over. The town of Braintree bought it, I believe, from the county uh, back in the '90s or something like that. And then they, uh, then they, then they, then they, uh, they lease it to us. So we we have a partnership with the town of Braintree. Um, How how's the transition? What transition is going on from the probate court with with you? How are you how are you doing your time? Like you got you got to because I know that you just don't drop things to. That you yeah, you know, we, I, 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 I've been pretty much my time is, is literally 110% doing the sheriff stuff now. It's, it's, and, uh, you know, we, we had a pretty good transition month or a couple of months after the election, uh, you know, working cooperatively. You know, I, I pretty much did, I didn't step on campus here in Dedham until January. Um, but we were meeting off site, at least for the sheriff's transition. But I was still on site. I worked right up until the last day at the probate court, just making sure things were ready and registered. Uh, um, uh, Briarly was, was there coming in and moving her things in and you know meeting the staff. Um, so it, it's, it, for both offices, it was really smooth. And I had a great transition to be sheriff too. Sheriff, the former sheriff, Jerry McDermott uh, was very gracious. Oh, uh, him and the, the superintendent, uh, we met frequently. They gave us an office in Braintree to work out of. So I had my transition team. They prepared fantastic books like this thick. Uh, you didn't have to change the last name on anything. Huh? No, luckily that's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just switching out the first name, so that worked out pretty well. But uh, <laughs> but it was in the uh, viewers should know that the former sheriff's last name was McDermott too. But it was very office. confusing for some people, you know. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it worked very odd ways with that. <laughs> <You know. laughs> okay, now Pat. <clears throat> We've always known you as a man with a vision. So right now you've been talking about what is now and maybe yep. what was, but tell us a little bit about your vision for the sheriff's office. So, so when, when I was running for office, you know, we, 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 had a, we had a very solid theme and the theme was, was, was surrounding prevention, intervention, education, and hope. That was the theme. It was, it was and, it, and it, it rose to the occasion when we made speeches and, you know, I often said to people that I wanted to reinvent the role of the sheriff as the chief public safety officer for Norfolk County. So focusing on public safety issues, you know, whether it was climate change, whether it was social injustices, uh, you know, crime prevention in general, um, senior programming, 
Um, but it all came back to the theme of prevention, intervention, education, and hope. Um, I wanted to convert the, 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 the role of the sheriff, not just as the, you know, the county jailer that, that basically manages a, a jail facility, but rather is out in the community creating robust programs uh, for the constituents um, in terms of the theme, prevention. You know, how do we prevent crime from happening in the first place? Well, what we do is we invest in at-risk populations. You know, we, talk, we talk to our youth populations that, are, that, that are, might be struggling. You know, we, we want to reach out to uh, the school resource officers, the local superintendents, the teachers, to identify kids that might be having a tough time, that are struggling, that may be going down the wrong path. How can we reach those kids in a way to, create, to, to, to set them on the right path, to help them make better choices? So I think we're going to have a very, in, we're going to invest heavily in our youth population. We gotta, we gotta stem the tide of, of, of drugs and alcohol addiction. That causes criminal behavior. So we have an intervention option to, to, to work with those, that population. I've already reached out with some great partners in our community, you know, like my strength is on partnering up with nonprofits. And, you know, we've talked to folks like the Gavin Foundation. We've talked to Interface Social Services in Quincy. We've talked to Father Bill's Main Strength to really identify people that are having problems with um, mental health, substance abuse issues. How can we intervene so that those folks aren't going into the criminal justice system? So, and we talk about our, our, our criminal justice system in, 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 in and of itself. I've already spoken with the judge, uh, with several of the judges, in particular, uh, Judge Heffernan out of the Quincy District Court. She runs the drug, pro, drug court. Uh, we want to make sure that offenders that are going through drug uh, criminal charges uh, that are going through her program, uh, we want to partner with them to make sure that they, they're not coming to necessarily coming to our facility. So um, it really is about playing that game. The, the educational component is huge. I think when you talk about what causes crime, it's largely based upon various you know, insecurities of people, food insecurity, income insecurity, economic problems, job skills, workforce development. If folks don't have a job and they don't have a place to live, they're going to either break into a place, they're going to find places to live, they're going to find places to how to feed themselves. And that usually bases on crime. So our education component is going to be huge. We want people to create the, uh, get the job skills and get the education they need to succeed in life. And that's a, that's a, that's a basic format. Uh, we do it here at the jail once we receive the folks. I want to be doing it before they get here. Uh, oftentimes people say to me that, Pat, you're, you're campaigning and you're running an organization that may put you out of business. Yeah, I'd like to see. I did the same thing at the probate court. I hated litigation in the probate court and I invested heavily on alternate dispute resolution. How can we help people solve their own problems? That, that should be our role as being the conduit to helping people. Yes. That way. You had wonderful programs at the probate court. Uh, you know, it, it was wonderful. Hopefully they'll continue with the pandemic being finished, you know, our, the lawyer of the day. And we're doing, I'm going to take some of those same programs. A lot of them are relevant to here. There. The lawyer of the day program in the probate court is just as important here uh, to right. have access to legal programs here for our, our inmate population. You know, it does, family law doesn't just happen at the probate court. We've got men here who are incarcerated that have families that haven't been able to pay their child support. They're probably in violation of some court order that we need their, that we need to help them with their legal problems here. Um, healthcare Great. is another big issue. We've got to deal with healthcare issues. I yeah. mean, inma inmates who are going back out in the street need to make sure they have access to quality healthcare. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that that's, because what we do in the sheriff's office creates a safer community in Sharon, in Canton, in yeah. Westwood, in Quincy, Bellingham, Foxwood. It, what we do here is, is giving people a second chance, sometimes a third chance. But How about maybe, vocational programs? Love, love, love chatting about that too. We're, we're reaching out now. We've got a, an active program that we're reaching out with, um, with our, uh, with our uh, uh, labor unions, first and foremost. Yeah. And oh, it supported me in my campaign, but I asked all the business agents of, you know, whether the pipe fitters or the electricians, or the painters, or the carpenters, you know, the plumbers, you know, if, if we are going to identify qualified or great candidates that may have just made wrong decisions in life, they've made it to the sheriff's office, would they be willing to take on a candidate in their apprentice program? And I haven't had a business agent in any local union say no to me. 
So that's going to be a promising thing. But you know what? What kid? What what men need to? They need the vocational training. We've talked to Quincy College. I'm reaching out to uh, Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy. I'm I'm reaching out to Stonehill College, Massasoit College. We want to create partnerships with these uh, educational institutions to create, you know, whether it's certificate programs or or something of that nature that gives people hope. In house here, we're looking to do a culinary arts program to teach oh, nice. teach inmates how to cook and how to be line cooks, how to run a kitchen. Uh, we have a we have a fantastic uh, automotive shop out back that services our vehicles. Why not help inmates learn how to change oil? Yeah, so they, they have to do something. Them. Maybe maybe you should have a requisition that they have to sign up for some educational courses and something that will improve that they just can't sit there and watch TV or whatever they right, do. Well, we'd hope, and and you know it gives them. A lot of the inmates, I think they're looking forward to having our programming reopen uh, because that's on foot. My, my tour of the jail up until now has seen a lot of that downtime. Luckily, we do have a very robust library. So, so books are available. So, you know, but unfortunately, you know, we don't have, not everybody's as studious and self-disciplined to sit down and read a book. So it's a lot easier to sit in front of a TV. I remember my parents saying that to me, geez, you got to get outside. You got to recreate yourself. Yeah. You, you know, well, you, you know, Bill, Camille and uh, myself with the Law of Money and you have been doing financial uh, awareness before it was, before other people did it. And I remember one person, this teacher saying that you got to get these kids when they're between the ages of 13 and 18 so that they don't, look for criminal ways or ways to to uh, sell drugs or this or that. you got to get them when they're young. So what you're doing, like with the schools and everything, that's fantastic. Expose them to what can be done and what you're doing and what will happen if they go one end or the other. You know, I mean, it uh, it's wonderful what you're planning and I, and I know you'll be successful. And oh, I have to tell you, we don't have much of a time. Left. I want to put a plug in. Uh, what <laughs> I know your, your office is great. They reached out to us. But before that, uh, you know, we were in contact with Glenn Hannington, an attorney oh, my man, who's one of your long, long time supporters. Yep. He, he says to me, now there's a new sheriff in town. Let him ride into town. <laughs> Be on your show again. I got to, I got to get Glenn. I should hire Glenn as my, my, uh, my marketing director. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, he's, he's just great. He's just oh, great. I have to tell you though, I'm very upset right now. Why? Because the next time I watch a crime program, I watch a lot of crime series on TV. Yeah. How will I know whether the sheriff who's handling something is in the oh, South yeah. or in the North? Are they really the crime enforcer? And which prison is this person going to go to? You, you made things worse rather than better for me. Look at yeah. that. See, now it, it, it gives you something to think about. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the COVID, it seems there's more crime from the kids not being able to go to school in person. So, uh, and unemployment. Uh, you mean yep. unemployment now has contributed to a lot of that. Uh, I mean, well, we'll we got a new sheriff in town. Name of the game. This is, this is wonderful. We, the people don't know how lucky they are that, that they have you because you do carry through with what you say you will. And if anybody's interested, we just, I just want to throw the website out there. NorfolkSheriff.com is uh, we're, we're revamping our website and there's going to be so many programs. Keep, you know, keep coming back to that. We've got our Norfolk County Heroes program that we're advocating. We're asking nominations for people, but local everyday heroes that need recognition. We want to get out in the community oh, and do that. Nice. That's on there. So, Our so senior what's the program, website again? The website it's, again? It's Nor NorfolkSheriff.com is our, is our main website. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you can do a NorfolkSheriff.com slash Norfolk County Heroes. And, oh, uh, and Norfolk you can nominate County somebody uh, locally, a neighbor or a friend that, that's doing some extraordinary work. Uh, we want to recognize ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Wow. And um, that's what we, we, I think we need, we need a little positive PR these days. So there's so yeah. much going on. We just need to celebrate it. And, and with that, Camille does our wind up and I, I, it went by so fast. Thank you so much. I feel such joy right now, just listening because what you're doing really is taking something uh, and dealing with it at the root cause rather than 
the symptom, which is the crying, you want to prevent it. And that's the cause of it. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you thank Matt. you so much. I, You're welcome. We'll thank definitely you. definitely have to have you back. We'll it's do it again. Wonderful. Uh, and for our folks watching, please let us know if you'd like more information, uh, if you'd like to uh, look at some of the things that, they're, that the county sheriff's office is doing. And remember, please let us hear from you because this is your show, The Law, Your Money, your money. And, and You. And You. And You. And <laughs> You.